The bell at Escola Estadio Getulio Vargas was a starting gun for Joao Americo, signaling the beginning of his personal marathon. Not a race against his classmates, mind you, but a desperate sprint to avoid being contaminated by their sheer mediocrity. To Joao, the world was a minefield of threats, a conspiracy orchestrated to diminish his inherent brilliance. He was convinced his classmates secretly plotted his downfall, whispered about his genius behind cupped hands, and maybe, just maybe, harbored a secret desire to blow him up with a homemade bomb. Joao's ego was a celestial body, and everything else was just orbiting dust. He firmly believed that every project, every scientific endeavor at their school should bear his name, Americo. The Americo solar panel, the Americo water purification system, Americo's germ theory. It didn't matter what it was, it should be named after him. He saw himself as the single driving force behind any good idea, the sole interpreter of complex truths. He didn't believe in teamwork, collaboration, or any of that touchy-feely nonsense. To him, merit was an individual sport. People either had it, the spark of brilliance he possessed, or they didn't. There were no helping hands, no second chances, only individual triumphs. If they were smart enough, they wouldn't need help. He'd often mutter, eyes glued to his phone as he tracked the volatility of the steel market, a world of high-stakes speculation he claimed to be a master at. He poured any spare money, and some money he didn't have, into stocks, convinced that he was destined to be a magnate, a living, breathing testament to the power of merit and ruthless individual pursuit. He saw himself as a natural-born capitalist, a titan of the economic realm. It's vital we understand how things like contaminated food affect our well-being. She'd explained, passing out research papers on neglected tropical diseases, in particular, foodborne trematodiasis. She highlighted how these illnesses, often caused by parasitic worms that can live in contaminated fish or plants, are a major health problem, especially in the global south. The data showed that the burden of FBTs, represented by disability-adjusted life years, was highest in regions with middle and high-middle socio-demographic index. She talked about how, in some places, people's lives were being drastically affected by illnesses that could be prevented. Joao scoffed inwardly at all that. Neglected tropical diseases, he thought, sounds like an excuse for incompetence. People need to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. If they get sick, they should have been more careful. It's about merit. His mind was busy calculating the optimal time to sell his shares in a mining company, completely ignoring Miss Silva's attempts to connect with her students on a human level. He noticed the mention of how male populations tended to have higher rates of infection than females, and it seemed like some sort of conspiracy against him. He refused to acknowledge that factors like access to clean water, education, and healthcare played a vital role in overall health outcomes, let alone the daily statistics. The idea of these parasitic diseases and the inequalities that surrounded them did nothing to change his perspective of a cruel world with only winners and losers. He saw himself as a winner, so that was all that mattered. Instead, he saw his name plastered on the research paper. The Americo study of parasitic worms. He imagined the accolades, the recognition he was due, completely detached from the actual complexities and suffering involved. The bell rang, releasing him from Miss Silver's indoctrination, and he strode out of the classroom, already calculating his next stock purchase. He was, after all, above all this, above the messy realities of the world, destined for greatness, and everyone else could simply get out of his way. The thought of the trematodes living in the intestines of millions, according to the report he barely skimmed, did not bother him in the slightest. It was just a sign of weakness. Days turned into weeks, and Joao's arrogance only amplified. He did a simple task for the research, not to contribute in a meaningful way, but to make sure his name would be on it. He was a master manipulator after all. His interactions with classmates became increasingly transactional. If they could help him, they were useful. If not, they were dismissed as dead weight. One day, during lunch, the class was talking about the FPT's research. That's a consequence of their lack of sophistication, probably their unhygienic practices. 
they need to learn the power of individual responsibility. But, Joao, it's not that simple. The paper said that even the period effect was important to analyze. Things aren't always an individual's fault. Period what? What does the history have to do with it? Joao sneered, dismissing her point and really her very existence. His eyes were fixed on his phone, tracking the fluctuating price of some obscure commodity. He didn't see the hurt in her eyes, didn't hear the collective sighs of the students who were slowly realizing just how out of touch he was. Joao, the research paper shows that the disease is more prevalent in places that do not have adequate public health infrastructure. It's about access, not necessarily individual merit. She pointed out some statistics, showing how even though the global ASDR of FBTs was predicted to decline slightly by 2030, the burden was disproportionately felt in specific populations and regions. But Joao was not listening. He was too busy with his next stock investment, the potential of a new iron ore deposit, or some similar economic fantasy. The day came when the science projects were due. As expected, Joao had slapped his name on the research paper, a crude effort designed more to showcase his genius than to actually analyze the complex issues they had been studying. Miss Silver, though disappointed, gave a short lecture to the class, highlighting the importance of solidarity and understanding. Joao Americo didn't hear a word of it. He was already plotting his next financial move, convinced that he was too smart, too talented to be concerned about such things. She explained that even though the dailies of FBTs might not be a direct threat to them, it was crucial to recognize how inequalities impacted communities far and wide. He was the speculator, the individualist, the Americo, and the world, in his deluded mind, existed to serve his ambition.